Next up, this was interesting. Actually, this is really fascinating. I am I feel like I'm a, a futurist. I like to see what is out there and what could be. At least I like to see what could actually make uh, my life and everybody's lives easier. And that's what technology is all about. So this article was fantastic. It states, Chainlink now lets you control your Tesla car. Fantastic. So what's going on here? An external adapter that allows getting access to Tesla cars and change their state has become available on the Chainlink market. I was like, I don't even know what that is. So there's a link to it, and here it is, Chainlink market. So they have all different types of things, data sources and uh, APIs, I suppose, where you can actually start to plug into different environments or in, into different activities that make Chainlink work and how it can actually work better. So I think, uh, hey, it looks great, and it's innovation on the cutting edge. So what's happening here? Chainlink powered car renting, external adopters, allow adding customized functionality. There's no need to run your own chain link node, given that external adapters can be hosted by their nodes in, in order to ensure decentralization. Uh, Parrish Asus, he was the one that actually uh, created this, uh, or the Parrish Asus adopter, dubbed Link My Ride, was created with the help of Tesla's feature-rich API that allows interacting with the e-car manufacturer's vehicles and other devices such as power wall batteries. Can you imagine this actually happening 10 years ago? five years ago. I mean, that's amazing. You can you can build a connection between a blockchain and a Tesla car to do certain functionalities. That's great stuff. And like I said before, there are things that we can't even imagine right now or think about or what's going to happen in the next two, three, 10, 20 years. It's going to look like a whole different civilization. I mean, imagine the internet 20 years ago. Things sure have changed. Anyhow, the adapter supports such API calls as authentication, locking, unlocking the vehicle, and honking the horn, just among others, I'm sure. Papacharusu says that around 20 API endpoints are yet to be added. One of the possible applications of Link My Ride is decentralized car renting, which is demonstrated in this video. It could save up to 30% of revenue for car owners. And it states, and this is probably from, from the creator, he states, in traditional vehicle rental platforms, the vehicle renter relies on the brand power of the company renting the vehicles and trust that the bond they submit will be returned if they adhere to the conditions and as a vehicle owner provider going through a trusted centralized platform usually requires sacrificing approximately 30 percent of revenue earned so when i first read this and when you read this you're like yeah centralization sucks not so fast because what he's talking about is not just not ride share apps like uber but uh ride rental apps something like turo so turo you can actually put your car on this and you can rent out your vehicle uh for you know as long as you want to so uh say say for for instance you're like okay we have two cars we don't need that car too much and we're going to rent it out or let's say we're going on vacation for a week and the car is going to sit there we might as well have it actually working for us you can rent it out it's like airbnb but for cars but here's the thing so somebody signs up right they take your car and then they get into a massive accident. So for some insurance companies, they will cover it for deductible. However, on some policies, they will not. They'll say, hey, you rented to a person you really didn't know. It was not your friend. It wasn't a relative. It wasn't family. So we're not going to cover that. Or here's, an, or here's an even worse example. Let's say you do it the other way, all decentralized, and someone puts it in, and they give a, uh, a fake ID, and they give you a credit card that is prepaid, and then they're just gone. They're gone with your car. So what do you do now? Now, I'm sure there's workarounds and everything else. Of course, there's, you know, anything can be solved, but it's one of those things that really has to be thought about. I mean, thought about well before you actually start to do these things. And this is one of the things with, with DeFi. I mean, we wanted to do all, we wanted to get away from centralized finance. We we created decentralized finance and said, you know what, we're going to do everything, and we don't need a middleman. And then look what happens sometimes. Well, contracts don't uh, aren't made uh, perfect, and the people that actually create it they leave uh, holes into it, and it gets hacked, and then people lose their money. It's the same thing here. So these are going to be growing pains, but just something to actually think about before we're like, yeah, let's do all this stuff for what decentralized. Whoa, just hold on. A lot of things to work out. A lot more complex than I think people think. Anyhow, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Let's move on. And last up.